Um, so anyways, we, we had to call, we're all running around like chickens with our heads cut off, had no idea where the water shut off is. We're trying, I'm trying every knob on the side of the house. Oh Lindsay's God. panicking. Imagine Lindsay panicking. She calls, uh, the fire department. <laughs> they show up to their credit within two minutes. They wow. show up, but they're like, they show up fast, but they really took their time walking over to the house. Uh, and, uh, and, and they're, and they, they pretty much didn't do a whole lot to help. Um, they gave us a tool. We were already digging up where the water shut off was. They gave us a tool to do it. Um, but it was 15 minutes of torrential downpour on hardwood and, uh, <sighs> and like also it's, it's on a walk street. So all the neighbors houses face each other and everyone's just like, welcome to the neighborhood, <laughs> you know? And, uh, so it's just been problem after problem. And then, you know, like yesterday, the garbage disposal doesn't work. And like some of the lights don't, I mean, there's just, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did, Jamie, he sent me a video and I wrote him back. I'm like, this hurts my heart. Like I yeah. feel really bad. It was just a video of his brand new living room. And it was like somebody had just turned a shower on and was just letting it, just letting it go. <laughs> Well, there was nothing. It was empty, though. Please tell me. Well, there, yeah, there was like basic furniture. There, there was. was. Oh. I mean, there was like a, a coffee table. I, I haven't uploaded it anywhere, but um, this can is we see a video. It? Can you share? I, I don't know if I can hold it up. This is really yes, bad you can. Pod, but wow, people are loving this. You can't see. see. You can't anything. see. Anyways, you just got to know that the house is like 120 years old, and um, there are 120 years worth of problems in it. So. Man, oh man. That was our fault though. That was our fault. You know? I feel like we should go like old school pajama pants, even though we've only been doing this for like six months. We should go old school pajama pants and not talk about the coronavirus. Yeah, no. Any... Yeah, no. right? Let's just fucking all right. Thank so, you. Let's see. I wrote oh in big news. I don't ah. think I've yeah, I've I don't think I've ever mastered and oh I know I Ooh, who's that? So my fucking nieces and nephew call all day to play Roblox with Bo. Roblox, <laughs> remember? Oh, there you go, you guys. I'm so sorry. This, this, this is our best episode so far, <laughs> for sure. This is it, it, this is going into. Is there a podcast Hall of Fame? <laughs> hey, Spotify, you're giving you're giving Joe Rogan how much? Uh, we'll take double. Can you believe how much that guy's? Oh, I can. I can, yeah. A hundred million. I mean, that's... Yeah, Sarah Gunn just bought a bunch of spots on their uh, podcast. Oh, really? really? Who do you got to sleep with to get a Sarah Gunn deal around? I mean, really? (laughs) I don't know. You used to live with one of them, you know. I thought thought you were going to say to get a Sarah Gunn. Yeah, just to even get a Sarah Gunn. (laughs) I might have to get the competitor. Well, you might be getting a housewarming gift. Oh. I I don't have a house, James. Rob, you just need to ask me. I need a wall. I've, I've asked. It's getting. You have? Yeah, I want a Theragun so bad, and I'm so cheap. Oh, done. Rob's um, been working out every day. Every I haven't missed Killer. one day. I haven't really? missed one day since like that April doesn't surprise 15. Me. That doesn't surprise it. me though, because you're but like, if to. you have the time, you're gonna do it. I haven't seen another person. I would go crazy. I've, I've hung out with people one time in That's three it? months. Yeah, one time. You didn't do anything last weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Nothing. No, I was waking up at 11 o'clock at night. But anyway. Oh, that's right. Uh, the big news I was talking about yeah. before. Uh, I've, I've never mastered anything in my life, but I think I, I've done it with this bidet. Like, I really think I've, uh, like, I, I'm you at have the like point. like a rhythm down? I'm at the point where I don't have to wipe anymore. Wow. Yeah. Is that Full, the goal? Is that the goal? Like the. That's been the goal of the my dream? life since I was like 26. Yeah. But I what's just, the, but what's the process that you don't have to wipe now? Like how well, long is this taking? There's, there's a certain amount of acceptance. You, you have to allow <laughs> some, you have to, it's basically like you have to relax while somebody is shooting a super soaker at your butthole. And it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to relax, especially with like, you know, as a dude, like you're not yeah. supposed to relax while anything is by your butthole. And I don't, I don't like I was fighting it for months. And now, like, I'm just getting to the point where I'm like, like okay. you don't even wince. Now, you oh, don't no, 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 flinch. I do. I do. But it takes about 30 seconds. You have to warm up. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. How long is this water hitting your butt? 
It's it the sounds first... like you just like stuff hitting your butt. No, That's no, no. Like, I, I actually don't like any of this, but I love, listen, I love not having to wipe and like put my finger in my butt. <laughs> right. That's what's going on. <laughs> I love, like, it's, mm. it's, it's amazing. Like I turn this thing on first 20 seconds is just like me being very uptight. <laughs> right. Like I'm like, I don't <laughs> uh, see the podcast. This is, is the big better. news. Well, yeah, with this microphone is making this podcast so much better. People so can much better. Hear this. <laughs> Hot, fucking um, high quality shit. It's uh yeah, and I just now like in the beginning I would have to do the bidet and then wipe, and then it was mm -hmm. like I had to fully wipe. Now I do the bidet and I wipe just as like a courtesy to the no one I've seen in the last three months, but like as to myself and my underwear, I guess, and whatever. Right. Like I'm I'm at the point where I don't even think I need to to wipe anymore. I just need to dry off and start the day. I mean, think this shit ever happens again and toilet paper becomes, you know, scarce again. You're set. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this. The Let's backbone the of this podcast has been, has revolved around your anus. And wiping and positional wiping. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I guess we should be, we should have updates on, on how your anus is. Mm. Well, there hasn't anus. been much to talk about, but I think this quarantine... If it gave me anything, I've really learned how to, you know, because I don't have much to think about during the day. So, like, you know, as soon as I as soon as I wake up, I'm thinking about I, I'm just really I'm just really happy, guys. I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'm, yeah. You know, generally when your butthole is feeling good, you're feeling good. And when you're mm -hmm. feeling good, we're both feeling good. You know, yeah. Yes. And we don't we're not doing any commercials for bidets. This thing was 1999. I would say you're both are frozen. A Does this mean mine's frozen? You're, you were frozen. Now you're not frozen anymore. Oh, okay. Great. Now you, now you are frozen a little bit. My connection is unstable. This is oh. pretty much par for the course right now. Well, wow. what the fuck does that mean? I Gabby's, have, anyway. Gabby's going to be working her ass off this week. I have emails. Oh, good. Do you guys, because I, I feel like um, I always feel bad when we can't get to the emails, but um, I have some, and I think if we can get to them now... Uh, and just bang yeah. a few out, I would feel yeah. better about it. Let's do it. You well, guys, we just only want to make you feel better right now. This is uh, the, the week I've had. I deserve right. it. Exactly. Um, Very handsome. If you guys, thanks. If you guys wanted to send us an email where we may or may not read it, uh, send it to askpajamapants at gmail.com. And then um, also, uh, I get some messages on our Instagram. Sorry if it's you haven't been responded to. Um, but I do look at them and I will eventually respond to all you guys on our Instagram. Um, this first email is from uh, Greg Nielsen. Okay. Hi, after listening to Rob on Talking Sopranos and hearing him mention your podcast, I looked it up. Today I began my relationship with the three of you by listening to the May 11th show with Michael uh, as the first. I am addicted. Not a podcast person at all. Talking Sopranos was my first. A couple of observations. I agree with Jamie that Michael's voice is unique and extraordinary. He should be doing voice work. Also, I found Kasim being self-deprecating on the first show about his celebrity status to be so endearing because I thought through that whole show that he was amazing and really pulled the whole thing nicely together. And he has another extraordinary voice. Wow, thanks, Greg. Uh, There's that sparkle. Hmm. There you look. I I love. No wonder you picked this one first. <laughs> look, I'm just going through them randomly. I'm just oh, going top to bottom. Okay. So let me see. The next Control email is from Cass. is from Cassim's personal trainer. <laughs> um, dude, you know the 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 saddest part of this whole quarantine was I have to pay a a, a personal trainer um, once every three months to program my workouts. And the last time I, and I pay $650 for three months of programming. The last time I paid him was a day before gyms shut down. And that was three months ago. And that's 300, 650 bucks that just went up into the air. But you know what? As long as I can take care of him and his family, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Uh, oh, this one's from Bogey. <laughs> Watching The Sopranos and owning The Sopranos cookbooks. I have to know how the food on set was. All the food scenes seemed super realistic and everyone seemed to actually consume some of the food and the options looked amazing. Did they really cater food and have any special dinners with the cast? 
Did any stories or traditions come along with the show? Can Artie or Carmela really cook? Much love, Nick. Um, you know, that's a great question because I always know from the few scenes that I did with food, you want to be very careful with what you're doing with food in a scene because you're going to have to end up eating it for take yeah. after take. What do you guys know about it? Edie, Edie taught me a trick where she always had a piece of gum in her mouth. So she was always chewing something, but she would take very little food. And I learned that the hard way. I mean, I would like sh shovel it in and like the master and then like you said, have to like eat the same the whole time. Yeah. But it was good food, right, Rob? Uh, no, it was horrible. Like there were times we would have to show up at like 5 a.m. and be eating like Chinese food. Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> And you sad. know, yeah. you know, there's no Chinese food places open at 5 a.m. So they got it the night before. They're maybe mm -hmm. microwaving it if you're lucky. It was, Everything was microwaved, I feel like. Yeah, it, the, the food was terrible. So that's TV uh, but, magic that it was more of the family being together that added that warmth and that taste. Because in real life, that was cold. Rob, do you remember the dinner scene from hell, though, that took like three days? The one where I lived in an apartment with like Will and like two other roommates. And it was it was the three roommates, me, you, Jim and Edie. And it took literally two days to shoot. I have no recollection. Really? No. Well, we talked about. I sound like off. Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> All I remember. <laughs> Shut up. Ew. Oh, I just saw that there's that Netflix special. Number. I just. I oh, just he's like, he's like, I'll, I'll use my. Uh, yeah. The fifth. Um, <laughs> like he just. Oh. They're like, they're like, how many people have you raped in this? He's like, oh, yeah, I don't really want to talk about it. So like in court. I haven't up. seen anything. Oh, my God. Oof. Cass, did you uh, start it yet? Uh, which one? Sorry. Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, yeah, I'm on episode three. I was just watching oh, oh, it. There's multiple episodes. You guys, I okay, we scrolled through it, but I ate this like cookie edible last night that someone gave me for my birthday. It was like, this is perfect to fall asleep because I was, I was kind of amped up yesterday and I was like, I need something to knock me out. I have to check back with Cutter because we haven't had time to talk to each other today because of children. But <laughs> I have a recollection of me like laying, watching the Jeffrey Epstein stuff and Cutter just being like, are you all right? And I'll be like, uh, my hand can't move. Uh, and him just like dying laughing. But this could have been a dream. So to, you know, I'll be right back with that story. I'll let you know. If you're I like, this guy's a fucking <laughs> asshole. Dude. Basically, like that's what I was talking, but I couldn't move my one arm. And Cutter was just dying laughing at me. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how many episodes boring. there are. I'm starting to think, I'm almost done with oh, episode four. three. Four. I'm, I'm starting to think that he's not a good, not a good <laughs> guy. You know, yeah. I, and I thought it was, I thought it was going to be one of those like shows that was like, uh, Millionaire homes, you know, where they show you, they show you all the cool properties that rich people. It's mm -hmm. like that. It's essentially like one of those shows where they just show you all their cool homes, but then it's also about rape. You thought it was well, going to be like. What do you like think? The... Do you think he committed suicide? Do you think people paid to have him killed? What's your What's your What's your? Oh, opinion? I mean, yeah, I'm definitely in the he was killed <laughs> camp. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's just actually the the part that right before the podcast started, they were talking about the. Uh, the Bill Clinton and Chris Tucker and Kevin Spacey uh, oh, visit that it. they had on his private island. Jesus. You know, and they, and they were saying like, look, some of the, the survivors were saying, look, not everyone that was on that island was doing that illegal stuff. stuff, but Jeffrey definitely was. And um, they definitely, oh, Prince Andrew, there was one girl that was uh, talking about how, or maybe as one of his employees actually was mentioning how he was, groping a girl that seemed very young. So it's pretty damning stuff, but also, you know, you get to see some pretty cool properties too. It's a, it's a bonus. You thought it was going to be like the Mr. Rogers documentary where like you were, you were going in like, Oh, what are we going to find out about this creep? But then it turns out he's really just a nice guy. I know all oh, that documentary. It's like the opposite of the Mr. Rogers. <laughs> it's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The complete opposite. You thought he was a good guy, but you're finding out he's not. Yeah. Oh, he, he raped he was that girl in. with a train. Choo -choo. Oh, um, oh, right. Yeah. So look, he, to, to be honest, he's just one of these uh, predators that um, you you hear about all the time that probably live in your neighborhood, except mm. he was a billionaire. So imagine being a billionaire and having being able to buy your privacy, buy the police department, buy like top notch uh, lawyers and attorneys. And it's essentially a lot of these shows, what they have in common is 
the the theme is with money you Roblox with enough money you can beat the system you know essentially Jamie can you put it on like do not disturb <laughs> Jamie all you got to do is that your eye messages you got to just right right click on your I just put eye. my phone on airplane mode Oh now okay. my dogs are going <laughs> this is we we are crushing it today. You know the new Fiona Apple record. <laughs> old she's, school, old school pajamas. She's got her dogs barking on the track, and Pitchfork gave it a ten out of ten. So who? <laughs> Fiona <laughs> Apple. Oh, I haven't listened to the album. I haven't listened to anything. Wait, wait, here, here, here's what the thing that you have to you have to think. Like you know, you hate to give them any kind of like out or whatever, but you have to think somebody is so mentally fucked up if it's like. This girl is 16, and if she comes and jerks you off, you are you can go to jail forever. But if that girl who's 18, two, uh, 18 months older comes and jerk you off, it's totally fine. And he's like, yeah, I got to go with the 16-year-old. Oh, yeah, you're saying why didn't he just – well, here's the deal, and this is what Lindsay said yesterday. She was like, well, why doesn't he just, like, pay for her regular prostitutes? He's not getting off, like – for, uh, on the fact that they're prostitutes. He's getting off on the fact that they're young. That's the part, like, that's the sickness is the part that gets him excited is that there's a fucking young girl there that shouldn't be there squeezing his nipples as hard as she can while he has, like, complete and utter, like, control over whether or not, you know, what or what she does. Like, he brings them into his lair, and then he, and he, has, he has all the power over them because he pays them, and he, like, he... he he plucks away runaways and girls that like don't necessarily have a, a great living situation or were also abused and have past trauma. And then he preys on that because that's the sickness. It's if he just wanted to like come all the time. Yeah. I mean, you do, you do what Robert Kraft does and just go to a massage parlor in Florida and like get jerked off by some Asian who was also probably illegally smuggled into the country. But uh, unfortunately that's not what gets, what gets Epstein off. You know, these guys have like, there's just, I, I imagine they, they can't, were all they sexually can get all that other thing. Or they just feel like, you know, it gets to a certain point where you can get everything you want. What's the, you know, what's the most dangerous thing? What's the thing that you feel like only you can get because of your power? Totally. Yeah. It's, and uh, the food on Sopranos sucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question. Yeah. yeah I, hope that sums, I hope that sums it up. Uh, what was the young man's name? <laughs> Greg. Oh, man. Greg. Uh, uh, and and he loves Nick. Cassim. Nick. Nick. <laughs> Jamie with a confident Greg. I love it. Super confident. I feel like Cassim said Greg. No. Well, there is a couple Gregs here. Mm. Um, I think, I think that psychic. cookie maybe is still, there's some remnants of the cookie lingering around. <laughs> very <laughs> possible. It was very strong. Very strong. Um, here's one from Kyle. Kyle says, hey, I literally just found your podcast because of Joey Diaz. Thanks, Joey. And I'm all in. I've never seen The Sopranos before until recently. And all I can say is, holy shit. It was probably the first show I actually binge watched in my life. But anyways, I've been thinking about getting into the acting business for quite some time. I work a full-time job. So I was thinking about taking acting classes either at nights or on the weekends. Uh, after Obviously, after everything blows over. I was wondering if you guys have any advice going in. Thanks and keep up the great work. Thanks, Kyle. What do you guys think? How, how, how would he start? I mean, I'm sure you get this question all the time. Jamie, this is probably more of a question for you. What does somebody do who has a full-time job and, but still has this passion and wants to see if they can get better at it or are good at it at all? Honestly, my internet froze. So I didn't hear the question. <laughs> yeah. This is a question for Jamie. Maybe it's a question for fucking Rob Cass. <laughs> Be, be a team player, you asshole. But try, just explain it quickly. So he has a passion, but a full time job. So how does he how does he support well, his passion with a full time well, job? He wants to know how would he start uh, acting. You know, oh. it sounds like he wants to take classes. Yeah, I would say get advice? in a class. I would mm -hmm. say get some book, get some great books. I mean, there's all different types of teachers. Like there's there's different From teaching me methods. To hug in, you can get Brian Weiss. You can get a Meisner book. You can get a Stanislavski book. Like I I love reading acting books because the truth of the matter is, in the end of the day, like your method is going to be your method. You're going to take a little bit from this, a little bit from that. Sometimes it's going to be for this project you do, sometimes not. But like yeah. just familiarize yourself and then find a class either 
if one gravitate towards more that is more improv based or Meisner based or more, you know, traditional yeah. based audit and make classes, sure you audit a class. Audit. Yes, yeah. exactly. Audit you, classes. And they're always at night. So you tend to can do them with a full-time job usually. Yeah. Unless By the way, there, at night. there is a documentary that everyone should watch. And especially if you want to be like an actor and this it's called, I think it was called camp Hollywood. It's on, um, Amazon Prime, and it's about this like Ooh, hotel down. kind of place in LA, and it's like the kids act- come to actors who people who are coming to LA to be actors like go there, and it's like, oh, I'm going to stay a week, and then they end up staying like three months, or yeah, and then there's people who it's like, oh yeah, he's lived in that room for eight years, and then there's one guy who like the cops are always looking for, and, and but like the stories are just really. Oh, it was it was really I would recommend checking it out for sure. Okay. Camp Hollywood. OK. Camp Hollywood. On, that's, a, uh, that's a good answer. That's about all I know about acting. I watched that documentary. Um, all right. I'm going to I'm going to try and pull another one up here. Um, right, wait. So, Jamie, wait, I want to ask you something. So, yeah. Um, uh, so we talk about like a, a compare like acting and singing mm-hmm. on how like your best moments in acting how do they compare to your best moments in singing and same with the worst, like your worst moments in singing and your worst moments in acting? See, that's a tricky question for me because I actually think I do my best acting when I'm singing because music, like it, the story is built in there. The rhythm's built in there when you're supposed to feel things, when you're supposed to, when they're supposed to be big, when they're supposed to be soft, when they're supposed to, you know, like music informs acting to me. That being said, the worst acting I've ever done is a scene on Sopranos. Um, it was like, I don't remember exactly, it was later in the show. I was like sitting at the, in the kitchen and like broke down about like my boyfriend or something to Jim. And it was at a time where I was like going through a divorce and um, I had just found out like a lot of shitty things from my lawyer and the scene, we were supposed to do it in the morning and then I was sent home and then they called me back like, no, we're going to do it now. And I had just gotten this phone call in between and I was like completely out of it, but like wasn't telling anybody what's going on. And it was my worst acting. It was just one of those moments where I like, I lit- couldn't leave my personal life behind. So that was the, and I remember leaving and looking at everyone, everyone looking at me like, what the fuck was that? Like it was bad. Are you excited to get to that part of your rewatch? I mean, I'm still only on season two, but yes, it's taken what? me this whole quarantine to get this middle of season two. So you said on, you did Talking Sopranos and you said that you felt like when you were younger or like on uh, Sopranos days, like you were hard to get close to. Yeah. Why do you think, what do you mean by that? What, why do you think that? Um, well, you know, I think always in my head, like I didn't feel like I was worthy. So I felt like I was like putting up, not, not with you, Rob, you were, you were different. Like you and I, you, I was always very relaxed around you. I always felt very comfortable and very safe around you. And not to say that anybody didn't make me feel that way, but I just felt like I like would just put on this front, like all was good and everything was fine. Cause that's how I was like always raised to be. Um, was like hide your problems and say everything's good and so i just feel like i wasn't it like, wasn't easy to get close to because i wasn't my most genuine self like i didn't realize that like being vulnerable like allows you to have like deeper connections with people i just thought i was going to be like an issue if people like if i was vulnerable does that make sense yeah very much so actually what uh so what about your worst moments in singing singing Um, my worst moment in singing was I was doing Beauty and the Beast and I had been doing it for quite some time on Broadway. And I just had what I don't know how else to call it, but a brain fart. And I forgot all the lyrics to the song I was singing and had to improvise them and make them up. And And this is on Broadway. This is on stage live on Broadway. (laughs) And they made no sense. I remember like the musical director at the orchestra, like looking up at me being like, (laughs) <laughs> i'm like hello <laughs> oh god i would have oh, loved yeah. to hear the words that you were but you know what with. you're like I, you are I, hairy and rhymed. that's a teacup they rhymed they rhymed <laughs> <laughs> i did i did make them rhyme though what uh so how do they compare like if you compare your worst acting moment to oh, your worst, worst acting was moment. so much so much worse why 
because it was like this, like I could feel that like I couldn't just like let this shit in my head go and just do what I always did. And like, I was playing meadow, like somebody who had like played for years and like across from gym, like these were, these were like my money scenes always. And like, just the fact that it was such a big struggle to me, I think was like my first inclination to that I was like, Oh, I could use some sort of like craft when it comes to this, because up until then it was purely like instinctual. Like I could use some sort of like method, some sort of thing that I can hold on to and use in moments like this when I'm massively struggling. And Cass, what about, what about you? Like your best moments in like hitting a million subscribers on YouTube. And then like when you were doing stand up and just like would crush, like to have a really good set, did the, how do you compare those? Uh, well, okay. I mean, there, you know, my, my standup career was super short cause I, then I transitioned into YouTube, but I had like one of the best nights of my life doing standup. And then I also had one of the worst nights and they were like both at the laugh factory. And I remember, um, opening up for Dane cook one night and this was probably like 2007 or eight. And, uh, Dan Cook was like, I, I think that was, he was a big deal by then. But um, I remember it was a big deal for me because I was still, I had to drive an hour because I was still living uh, out in like Thousand Oaks and I would drive an hour out to do uh, sets and stuff. And I, and I, this one was a big deal. So I invited a bunch of friends and um, did like a five minute set, remembered every joke. It went really well. Um, everyone was like, it was like, way too much applause like because it was mostly my friends in the audience and i remember like the 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 guy at the laugh factory was like wow that was like that was really impressive like would you like to come back and i was like oh yeah i'll come back he's like yeah come back on tuesday i came back the next week and none of my friends were there same material um room full of comedians and just bombed as hard as I could. I was forgetting jokes. I was just, I think for a second, I was just like, oh man, <laughs> you know, it's just so bad. I was like, oh, this is not, I, I think I'm like, yeah, this is uh, not good. And uh, it just, I wanted to quit right then and fucking move. I wanted to move back to the Middle East and fucking dig a hole in the desert and live there. And, uh, it was just one of the hardest things. And then I got some advice from a, a buddy of mine. He's like, dude, look, that happens. The worst thing that, that can happen here is like, you never get on stage again. You have to get on stage and you have to do it quick. And I, I did, I did go, I think it took me like, I think it took me like a couple of weeks before I got the courage to go do it again, but, That's and, why and, I it, think that and it was fine, thing. but it was like, I mean, that, that feeling you know, when you're about to go to sleep and then you just go through every moment that was just, you want to oh. take back. That's just one. I was like, I just see in my head, just me holding the microphone going, Oh man, you know? And just, yeah. it was, yeah. and it's so, and, and like just a week before I had one of the best moments, but I, I choose to never remember that as opposed to like the night I bombed. And I learned that, look, I was a learning experience and it was great. Nothing on YouTube generally like had that sort of visceral, like in the moment, that's what's going on. On YouTube, you're kind of detached from the computer. And like uh, when I hit a million subscribers, like everyone would do like celebratory things. I just like tweeted out like, hey, thanks. That, that's very cool. And then I didn't do I didn't make any a big deal about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I do remember those things more vividly in person <laughs> doing stand up. YouTube was I generally had a very much like a, I, I'm not, I think when you go do stand up and then you go do YouTube, there's like a, how bad, how bad can things be? You know, I can edit everything I put up. It's all like, I decide when to post it. I can reply back. I can delete comments if I want to. I didn't really mm -hmm. do that, but I can, if there was a comment that really bugged me, but when you're doing stand up, everything is right there. And, uh, one time one guy heckled me and like, I don't, I don't remember anything else about that day, but one guy was just like, yeah, get off the stage. He said something like that. And and that just like it haunted me because I can't delete I can't delete that guy's comment. It came right at me. And you know what? He was right. It's like I was I was lost in that moment and I should have 
I had no idea what to do about it. Um, and I didn't do it long enough to like develop, um, you know, tools and skills to get through those things. I just kind of moved right into YouTube, but, uh, yeah, I mean, just talking about it makes me like sweat. Just like thinking about it. It was rough. Yeah. Yeah. My highest high on this podcast was when this microphone started working. It really, I, I'm still like, I know. It was. I don't know what, what you did, but it sounds way better. Yeah. I, what I was your, what was your best or worst? Uh, so, you know what, the, the reason why I'm asking this is because when I was like cooking, uh, today or yesterday, I was thinking about this, like how for me, uh, with poker and acting, like the, the highs, like my best moments in each are very similar. Like the feeling you get is exactly the same, but the lows wow. are so, are so different because like your lows in, in, um, in poker is like, I hate myself. I hate this game. I never want to play again. I'm such an idiot. And then like all this horrible things about yourself. Where with acting, like I didn't do enough acting probably outside of Sopranos to really like experience, you know, just times where like, I it was really angry with myself in this, but in auditions, I really like the, that were like, I've gone on an audition and left and been like, I should just die. You know, like, I, like I'm the worst, per- like, I don't even believe I was in that room. Like, I, I don't yeah. believe I was a person holding a piece of paper and, and, because like, you know, we've talked about it on here, but it's like you, you plan it, you know, and you plan in your head. You're like, okay, like, that's the thing with, with Sopranos. It was kind of like, I would learn the lines and I knew if I knew the lines, like you'd be there, Jim would be there, Edie would be there. It would all come into play. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. Where in an audition, like, if, if something like, you know, you, you imagine how it's going to go and you walk in the room and then like the woman who's recording you is like on her phone and then it just turns everything that you had planned into like mm. the, uh, like, uh, I'm like, wh- why, why is she, she's on her? Did she even start the camera? Like, I don't, am I supposed to be go what, what do I sit? Do I sit? Like, am I talking too loud? Am I, and then you're in your head and it's just fucking like, you know what it is too? It's like on Sopranos, if my first take was bad, it's like, it never happened. Where like in an audition, if you're, if the first take is bad, it's like, see a sucker, you know? It's yeah, just like, you know, I auditioned once for this guy named Bill Lawrence. He's created a lot of great television shows like Scrubs, for instance, a lot of great stuff. And I went into audition for him once. And before I started, he said to me, he's like, Hey, before you start, I just want you to let you, you know, like me and my co-writer, we're both married to actresses. We get completely how much this sucks, like this whole process. So just know this is your time. And if you want to do like another take or two, if you feel like you could have done something better or different, like just tell us, like we are totally here to like, just watch you do your best. And I was like, that was so, so nice. Fucking cool. Like if, yeah. and if everyone could just give that vibe to actors coming in auditioning, people would always give their best work. You right. know, it just, it all made such a difference to just feel like, oh, you get it. Like you understand that this is very difficult. Auditioning is difficult for everyone, no matter what level you are. And you know what the weird thing is? It's like, I don't see myself as an actor. I don't give a shit about what the people in the room think about me. Like, I don't care about, and I guess it's the whole thing of like, as soon as, as soon like you think like, oh, I got this job. And then the second, like, one thing goes wrong. It's like, I don't, I don't have this job. Like, you know, it's like, I, I like, I, this was in the fucking palm of my hand and now it just like, like, it's just yeah. totally gone. And I don't, it's, and people who like are not actors or even who are probably like, God, you guys suck it up. You pussies. But it's just, man, it's, it's a, you know, but like, that's a thing too, right? People would probably expect like, if you're, going on the set of Sopranos and working with Jim and Edith's going to be on HBO and millions of people seeing it. You must be so like nervous and this never, never a day ever. But then in an audition room where no one's ever going to see it, except maybe this one person, it's just, I don't know. I just, I know. Terrible. Did you have to audition for your daredevil role or I don't was know. that an offer right away? I don't remember. I would imagine it was an offer. Yeah, I think I would remember. Um, I remember, like, I think I went on one audition in the last like over ten years or whatever, and that, that I remember being like studying for days, like sitting in the bathroom in like the Roosevelt Hotel, like on the toilet with the door shut because there was like partying outside, and I was like, I'm just gonna learn this, and I'm gonna crush it, and I'm and I got into the room, and it was a scene where like 
we were at war, you know? And I remember like, this, by the way. I remember <laughs> talking to you before or after you went in. Probably after, because I remember being in the rental car smoking the cigarette, and I was like, I just want to drive this car off a cliff. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I was just so, like, and looking at, like, the no smoking sign in the car, I was just like, yeah, fuck you, you know? Like, just so, uh, I went into the room, and it was literally like a scene where like we're in a ditch and there's like grenades and everything. And the woman's like, yeah, like, uh, like, just like click the camera on, not really paying attention. There's like a white room with like nothing in there. And she was like, yeah, whenever you're ready. And I was like, and, and I, for some reason I went from like totally ready, knowing everything to just, it was like that scene in the matrix where like, there's nothing anywhere. Like I was like, I don't, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? What character am I? I had nothing. And I was just so like, I was like, by the way, this lady like wasn't doing anything wrong. I'm sure it was like her 40th person in the day. She didn't give a shit, you know, like she didn't know I had not auditioned in 10 years or whatever it was. And right. I was just, I, I just was horrible. Like I was so bad. Like if we could watch it <laughs> right now, like if we had the tape, it would just like, I don't really care now. Like, but, but I think about how I felt. Sure. Walking out of there and I was like, fuck acting, fuck all this. I never want to do this ever again. I never want to come back to LA. I never like, where can I go get a drink? You know, like I even like didn't drink the night before. Like it was a, you know, for me, that was a big deal. Yeah. It's uh, a business, dude. It's a business and it's all, it's all numbers. And I remember the, the auditions I thought I was like, oh, I'll never hear back from these people. We're always the ones where I did, you know, and yeah. then the ones where I thought I nailed it. I, you know, it's, you yeah. just never, you just never know. But I mean, I liked in your story and I had one experience with a casting director that was really nice, you know, and that makes all the difference. Jeez. If for, if, if for somehow they can disarm you quick enough, um, they, they will get a product because their, their job is to like, they want you to be good and they want to yes. cast you and they want the director and all the other, you know, members of the cast to like you they want you to do good you know there's there's definitely those rooms where you walk in and then there's just a guy in a corner that's just like <laughs> you're gonna be reading with her you know and it's just i had one last cool. year yeah i had one and, last year where i knew the casting director really liked me but the guy in there was not about me like the yeah. guy that wrote it which was a bummer so the cast writer comes out, he's like, hi, Jamie. Like, so excited you're here. You look so cute. Like, ready? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, stoked to go in. I'm like, He's a, he's a straight guy, right? <laughs> so straight. It's 2020, bro. And, go in and uh, Dang. I'm like, hi, everybody. And the guy was like, was yeah. like oh, cool. Wasting my time. But here you go. Ugh. The worst. The worst. Well, Jamie, so I, I cast him to do it now. <laughs> you look like you know what it is? It's, nightmares. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger from True Lies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, do it. Love that scene. Slowly, do it. Do it slowly. So, Jamie, here's here's the question I have for you. Let's say this thing, uh, something happened tomorrow. We're locked in for another six months. You can't leave your house. Nothing. Would you consider going to a gynecologist over Zoom? What? No, they got it. It's so weird because there, one of the calls that was coming through with my guy college, and I just realized I totally whiffed and missed an appointment two days ago. See, no, I, nothing's going on. We don't need to check it. It can wait. Oh, sorry, Doc. I totally quiffed and missed like, that appointment. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> sorry Doc. It was a brain queef. <laughs> <laughs> totally queefed on your call. Um, can, you mind if I. Did I say you, queef? Can you queef me in did later I say, this week? <laughs> did I say queef? No, no, but that's what you should have said. <laughs> I really thought oh. I said it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. It. I know I have not shown my vagina to a screen since I was uh, first dating my husband. <laughs> and we were long distance. So it's been a long time. You got to get in there and the guy's got to feel around, you know. There's it's a woman and yeah. All... Yeah, what's the point? Yeah, Jamie's a, not a slut. She's got a, a woman gynecologist. Yeah. Crazy. So is that, did they also do your mammogram, love, those people? I have never had a mammogram. Uh-oh. I'm under 40 still for another year. Thank you. Got to so, get somebody in there and give you a good honk honk. 
Those four percent of women way will listen to us harder than Hong in the, Kong. In the you gotta get in there. You gotta get you a Hong Kong. Well, they you they turn suggest on the water, the start faucet, getting, and check the. Temp. They suggest mammograms after the age of forty. I don't have breast cancer in my family at all. Fortunately. Oh, that's good. So um, I haven't been told. We we do the feely feel though. You know, we do the the checky check. Who's we? It's a self harm. I do it, and then my doctor does it when she's with me. <sighs> oh, I thought you were gonna say your your husband. My kids, I just have them check for lunch. Nice. They each get one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're like, you after eat dinner activity. You know, it's a science project. Yes. Yeah. It fed them for years. They should, you know, they should be able to. Yeah. Bo actually just recently the other day was like really weirded out by the fact that he used to be breastfed. He was like, oh, I ate from your boob. I was like, yeah, <laughs> sorry. You're welcome. The fuck took a lot of work. I feel like yeah. there's a lot of guys who listen to this podcast who they're probably figuring out if they could go online courses right now to become gynecologists. And because if, if, if people, if zoom is the future, that's, Oh yeah, that would be, could you imagine, ima- imagine that would be, that's a, that's a great like SNL skit, like calling your gynecologist over zoom. Yeah. There's like a vagina, like that pretty to like, like to look at that way. Well, I tell you what, is that a turn on? It's a manscape machine. Ah, for that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. For that. Yeah. I got to tell you, Lindsay's borrowing mine. So it's for both. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah, but she's pretty. She's she's kind of on the dude side of things, you know? She's got a lot of testosterone. That's one way to start feeling sexier is start using your manscape more. Yeah. You know, it vibrates. And uh, I think there's a, there's multi, it's a multi-use tool really when you Absolutely. think about it. Absolutely. So Kasim, you, you said you stopped going to the gym. If let's just say your body was a 10, cause that's what you would say. But when you went, when the beginning March, whatever, 10th, what are you at now? You think? Oh, I mean, I can physically see reduced muscle mass and where I had abs before, I think I can only see two abs now. I mean, if I was a 10 before, I'm down to like a seven. Mm, right not now. far. It's not bad. You can easily pop That's back up. I, you can bounce back up, but uh, I was going five days a week and now I'll be lucky. You know, the new house has stairs, so I guess that's good. Um, getting some stair climbing in, and uh, but I am negating when you all the sugar I'm eating. If you guys, here's one of the questions I had. If you guys were on a 10 hour flight somewhere, would you rather sit alone or sit next to someone like a stranger? Like, let's say you, you sat down in your seat. Would you rather the seat next to you be empty or would you rather somebody like you have enough space? Let's say it's first class. So it's not like they're taking over your space, but just would you rather sit next to someone or sit completely alone for 10 hours? Alone. Alone. Yeah. I mean, unless it was somebody attractive here's that's know. that's where the part of my question comes in does it matter like how interesting they are how good looking they are i don't well, want to talk to anybody you know i i wouldn't mind sitting next to an attractive attorney because there's a lot of legal questions i think i could ask and get for free <laughs> and uh but other than that I, I would mostly like to be by myself because i don't like to consciously worry about who's taking the armrest and <laughs> Sometimes I want to make a fart. Yeah, but you could fart on a plane and nobody, please. Who's, you know. I, I don't if people are right next to me. I really don't. Please. Let it go. I've never talked to anyone on a plane. Really? I've never met anyone on a plane. Do you wear those headphones when you go on? That, that might I be sleep. <laughs> I tend to sleep when I'm alone. Yeah. Um, Ever had sex on there? On a plane? Yeah. No. I've never had sex on a plane. Me either. I don't know how. Oh, what is, have you ever, I've, I've had sex in a cab and I got a blowjob on a bus. Oh. On a bus? What? On a bus. I thought they what just did that bus? in porno like videos. Like a school bus? Like a metro bus? No, no. I stopped going to school. If a school bus. I, I would have had to have been like eight years old. Uh, Recent, <laughs> I, is this recently? No, on like one of those, um, <laughs> the buses that go from like Jersey to New York. Like a Greyhound. Like a Greyhound bus. Yeah, we were we were going through the the tunnel actually. It's a very quick BJ. Well, listen, when you're getting a blowjob on a bus, things tend to you know you gotta you gotta get you gotta. <laughs> That's exciting. Now let me ask you. But it, it wasn't that fast. It was probably you know 
a five minute blowjob, which I guess for a bus blowjob is not like extremely. Do you like the it's public? Very long. Do you like the voyeuristic element of it more, or do you just like a mouth mouth on it? <laughs> no, it was just you know what, like we were in the back of the bus, and I don't know, shit, we just started like fooling around, hands were moving around, and then it was like, hey, we still got twenty minutes on this ride, and we might as well, you know. Is that how it went down? Like that's what you said? No, there was no talking about There's it. There's no talking. Like, yeah, it was, it was just, just like vibing. Her, yeah, Did you kiss her after? vibing. Oh yeah, she was my girlfriend. I kissed her. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was the only one girlfriend I had. So you could. You, could you didn't worry her. about like little spermies in between her teeth when you kissed her. Listen, you just gotta. You know, it's it's like a respect thing. If a girl's gonna blow yeah. me and and swallow it, then I just you know. So I, to respect a girl, miss. you've got to swallow your own jizz. Is what I'm. Is what I'm hearing. No, no, no. I'm not like, it's not like, like dro- drool dripping out of her mouth. You know, she's not drooling. Oh my God. No, I'm just saying like it was, you know, but if once things are like, once it's gone, then it's, you know, back I don't know, like, but well, I don't know if it is gone. Cause it's like, it's like eating popcorn. There's a, a small percentage <laughs> of it. That's always in the teeth. Eh, whatever. What are you going to do? I don't know. I guess you could well, swallow you better a couple hope of your you were manscaped then. So at least then there was no. I'm always manscaped. Hair. Yeah, I mean, I used it once and I've been good because remember, I, I went too low on it. I went too low on the setting. Oh, yeah. Like, these last couple of weeks have been, uh, you know, like I'm growing, like I'm growing uh, parsley or something, just watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get to another email? Yeah, let's get, you got an email, Cass? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, by the way, <laughs> thank you everybody who gave us uh, five stars on iTunes. Oh, how nice. Yeah, and every, and there's like... It's oh no shit! Like, it's something like one out of fifty people who listen have rated us. So if anybody has extra time and they could go over to iTunes and rate us, and that it helps us out, and it would be very kind of you. Pretty kind. Um, thanks, guys. This this I man, did I read this one already? Let me know. Stop me if I've read this, okay? But this one's from Carmen. And she says, "Hi, my name's Carmen. I've been in contemporary Christian music since 1982." Does any of that sound familiar? No. But by the 90s, I was the, I was the Not only gospel. having a brain queef. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's by the, name the 90s. Of this episode, yeah? What's that? Yeah. Did that be the name of this episode? Brain queef? Sure. I think so. Uh, by the 90s, I was the only gospel stadium act with 35 music videos and lots of gold and platinum CDs. Oh you can check me out on YouTube under Carmen. Then the 2000s came and everything slowed way down. Mm. I'm then in my 40s and got dropped from my label and it was really hard. Now I was going back to small churches and venues. I felt like God fired me and I don't know why. Then I got incurable cancer in 2013 and by 2016, I found out I had a heart disease. I had to get seven stints over the last few years. Being an Italian from New Jersey, I was a huge Sopranos fan. Everybody acted and talked like all the family and I and people I knew growing up. During nine months of chemotherapy, I watched it at least 10 times, along with Breaking Bad, because he had cancer too. My question is obvious. After the high of being such a classic TV show, then, boom, it's all over. How did Jamie and Robert deal with the inevitable drop? What type of feelings did you have to work through? P.S. I'm so surprised to see how different Robert was in his character. He performed that so well and made it so believable. I actually thought they wrote the script around his total, this total flake of a kid. But now I'm so impressed with his acting chops. Excited to see whatever he does next. Man, that, that is a heavy... I'm so sorry to hear all that, Carmen. I, I, hope, I hope things are going much better. When you said something about how you felt like God fired you, like immediately my head was thinking like, no, sometimes things like that happen to have us go down a different direction. And first of all, you can't, you know, uh, take away the success that you had. It sounds, that's not something that comes by to just anyone. So kudos to you for that. Second, I've just, I'm so sorry with everything you've had to deal with. And that's, that's terrible. I hope you're doing okay today. Um, But I, it's hard for, I think, me, us to compare what you went through with, like, with The Sopranos kind of being o- over. But, yes, there are times, and Rob, I think we've talked about this, where, like, we got to s- start on something that's, like, literally, like, the goal for 
majority of people in this business. Like that's what anyone would strive to be a part of. Rob and I were so young to be a part of something like that. So then anything else you do just doesn't feel as special sometimes because of the way people value things. So I I think that, I I mean, I, I wouldn't say I've struggled with it, but I've definitely dealt with feelings about that for sure. Yeah, I think I think it's totally different because I think with us and with everybody on the show, if not a lot of them, part of them was ready for the show to be over and move on and do different things right. or whatever, where it sounds like, you know, all these things that that happen in your life that sucked, you, you didn't want or weren't ready for any of them, you know, so to try and, and compare it and like, yeah, I don't think you can compare it at all. It would be like. You know, there was a time where, like, on season three or four, um, uh, David Chase wanted to have a talk with me because, like, I, we, we spoke about this, I think, before. Like, yeah. one of the – I had a problem with one person on set. By the way, I had never had a problem with never. anyone ever on the set. And nothing more than, like – I mean, like, the like I was like, I think everyone's the greatest. And there was just one person who – uh, came in, was there, and like on their fifth day, I guess I, like the kids were like the low hanging fruit or whatever, and they were just they were really mean to me, and it, and it wasn't uh, an actor, but it was just like somebody was really mean, and like David kind of had to talk with me, like you know, did did you give attitude to this person or whatever? And I was like, why would I ever do that? So not only were they mean to me, they then went and spoke to David and was like, yeah, this guy gave me an attitude, whatever. So like, if for some reason then. I got like fired from Sopranos or whatever that, that would, you know, could somehow be similar or like if, if it all got mm-hmm. taken away from me or whatever, yes. where it, we were all in it together. And when it ended, we were all, you yes. know, in that together and saying goodbye to everyone. And there was such a, like, it wasn't just ripped out from underneath yes. us. Like, like what it sounds like you went through, you know, it was a yeah. very, like we saw going up, we knew, Hey, this is probably going to be the last See, We knew, over a year out, like, Hey, this is probably going to be the end. And we still got to hang out with everybody after. And we were, everybody was still friends. Like there, there's no comparison. No. It's, uh, I think that's a great answer. I'm, I'm pulling up. It, it turns out it's a, it's a guy. His name is Carmen spelled <laughs> Carmen. Um, and he's got a YouTube channel with 30,000 subscribers. So if you guys wow. want to go look at it, uh, Man, I don't know how to say this last name. It lit Licciardello. L I C C I A R D E L L O. Carman Licciardello. Is that how you would say that in Italian with the two C's? Yes. You're asking okay. two non Italians? <laughs> I answered. You guys yes. will always be Italian to me. I'm sorry. But, uh, Look, hey, hope uh, thanks for the email. That was really nice of you to send one. And um, we, we wish you the best best of luck and best of health. That's about all the emails. I mean, there's there's a few more, but I think we there's can no get more. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's, that's a great no one, one to go out on. No one's ever sending one in ever again, too. <laughs> well, look, if you guys want to uh, send us an email, askpajamapants.com. It may take a few weeks for us to get it, but we, we'll eventually uh, get it and maybe read it and... Also, Instagram's a, a great way to connect with us, Pajama Pants, uh, on Instagram. And thanks for everyone that's come over from Talking Soprano. Aren't, aren't we Pajama Pants podcast on Instagram? Yes. I'm in the middle of our plugs, Robert. But you just said it wrong, didn't you? Or is it just Pajama Pants? No, you pants? just search Pajama Pants. We should be the one search? that put Pajama Pants. Put in Pajama Pants podcast, okay, if you got I'm to. I'm doing it right now. Listen, and, uh, whatever. But look, okay. Okay. Pajama and, uh, pants podcast. Well, did you put in pajama pants to see if it what's also? The, what's well, the point? It just of a came plug? up. Pajama pants podcast. Well, what's that's, the point of a plug if it's wrong, Cass? It's fine. They'll find us. They'll know. They'll know. I have an idea, Cass, that we should do. We should do this for a documentary. I think one of the best documentaries of all time can be made in the next couple of weeks, where you wait outside of casinos for the people who are like waiting for the doors to open and speak to them. And I promise you, you mm-hmm. will find some of the most interesting. That's a great idea. People, some of the most amazing character. I mean, it will go down because I know the people from going to casinos all the time. I know the people who are in there all the time and the people who you're like, 
why it's how is that guy here at 3 a.m but he's also a guy who's here at four in the afternoon like it doesn't make sense and, th- and then there's like the guys who are just go for the race horses and also if you get a camera and go to vegas like for the people six hours before the casinos open and you just go around talking to people oh man that would be a great it would be great and i have a feeling um Anyone that's there, you know, for a grand opening, which is when, but do we know when Las Vegas is supposed to open soon? Uh, yeah. I mean, if, if your first, first place to check off your post pandemic lockdown is, is a casino, I want to talk to you and, and maybe we can get some of them to call into the show. You know what I mean? Can we do call-ins? We can do a zoom in. Um, oh, I so want, fun. I want 60 or 70 year old blackjack players, keynote players, Racehorse betters, slots, all kinds of slot players. My dad is a racehorse better. Is he? He owns racehorses. He's upset. He, he took my mom on their second date to Belmont. He owns racehorses. That and is, he made I want to hear all the, about that. He made her hop the fence because he couldn't afford like the tickets. <laughs> really? Whoa. The admission. That's a big yeah. business. Yeah. And now he owns racehorses. It's really it's cool. Essentially, um, race. Racing horses is a front for uh, selling horse jizz. You know what I mean? Like for you to sell well, horse fun. jizz, you got to have the, the horse race and win. And then that jizz becomes very valuable. Oh, yes. Really? Oh, yes. I never knew that. You never. That's why people race horses. That's why you want dogs to win Westminster Dog Show because you want to sell the jizz or sell the mm-hmm. puppies because they're champion. They have now they're officially champion um, bloodlines. Think about how much more you could have got for your jizz when you were a 10. Now that you're a seven, it's worthless. My jizz, is, my jizz stock has dropped tremendously. That's horrible. What, Jamie, when do you I'm think- I'm still collecting them in mason jars though. When do you think pajama pants, it's, uh, it's imaginable for us to get back into studio? It's all on you. Me? Not, not putting pressure on you. I'm just saying whenever you're ready, we're, we're ready. Once I'm done homeschooling, I've got like a week and a half left. I have have much more time. Okay. Well, I just mean health wise. Like, oh no, I'm ready. We want you to feel safe. I feel safe. Okay. Okay. So you, when hey, whenever we're gonna be back in the studio, it's gonna be a big party. We're coming in with kisses. Are we hugging? Oh yeah, we have to hug. We all we know. I'm I'm listening. You and I have to hug. It's like a like we can't not. And also, we know I don't have COVID. It, if, if, if I have it, everyone in the world has it. Tassim? Has it. I want to hug you. <laughs> <laughs> you can hug me, too. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be so soft and pillowy to hug. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's end this. I'm going to work out. <laughs>